Hi, welcome back. This is Rakesh Naik. Today we are going to discuss the second part of closure property on context-free languages. But before we start, a small information I'd like to share. In this channel, we produce every video in two different languages. If you want to watch this video in Hindi, kindly follow the link given in the description. And if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe and press the bell icon so that you will get regular updates from this channel. So, let us start. In our previous video, we have seen the closure properties of context-free grammar. In that, we took first five closure property and discussed. Today, we are going to see the second five closure property and we'll be discussing. So, these are the ten closure property that we are having and first five we have already discussed. The second five we are going to discuss in this particular video. The sixth closure property is Context-free grammar is not necessarily be closed under intersection. It is a very important closure property. We are going to show this with the help of an example. Let us say we are having a language containing strings in the form of a to the power n, b to the power n and c to the power m. Where m and n both of them are greater than or equal to 1. You can see here number of a's are equal to the number of b's. Whatever may be the number of C's, it may appear. This can be represented by this particular grammar. Where S derive AB, A derive AAB or AB and B derive CB or C. This grammar is a context-free grammar and this can be accepted by a push-down automata. Already we know it. Let us take one more context-free language and this language will generate string of this form a to the power n, b to the power m and c to the power m where m and n both of them are greater than or equal to 1. Again this is also a context free grammar and for this we will be having one more grammar of this s derived a b, a derived a a or a, b derived b b c or b c. Again this grammar is also be accepted by a push down automata. Now if I want to take the intersection of both of them what is common in both of them that I need to take? So L1 intersection L2 will be A to the power N, B to the power N, C to the power N, where N is greater than or equal to 1. Again, this is also a context-free grammar. But here the thing is number of A's is equal to number of B's equal to number of C's. I cannot use a push-down automata in order to realize strings of this particular language. I will not be able to realize the strings of this particular language. So I need a Turing machine or a two-stake PDA. When it comes to Turing machine, obviously this grammar is not a context-free grammar. I hope you understood it. Let us take the seventh closer property. This is the context-free grammar is not necessarily be closed under complementation. Let us see. Let us assume that the context-free language is closed under complementation. Then if L1 and L2 are two context-free languages, it means L1 complement and L2 complement supposed to be context-free language. We have already seen that union operation is closed under context-free language. It means L1 complement, union L2 complement supposed to be a context-free language. Now, as L1 complement and L2 complement, both of them are context free. So I can write L1 complement union L2's complement complement has to be context free language. But I know that by applying De Morgan's law, it is nothing but L1 intersection L2. But already we have seen that intersection is not necessarily be context free language. So I can say the assumption that we have taken that complement can be a context-free language is a contradiction. Hence, I can say context-free language is not necessarily be closed under complementation. Close the property. The set difference of two context-free languages is not necessarily be context-free language. Let us say L1 and L2 be two context-free languages. 
let us assume l1 equal to sigma star minus l2 but we know that sigma star minus l2 is nothing but l2's complement and we know that context free languages are not necessarily be closed under complementation hence we can say the set difference of two context free languages need not be context free language again i hope you understood this also let us take the next one it is a very important closure property if l is a context free language and r is a regular language then their intersection has to be a context free language now let us say p be a pda that accept that particular language and m is the dfa that accept the regular language now let p des equal to l intersection r a new push down automata p des that will assume p and m simultaneously on the same input and accept if both got accepted now there are few observation let us see the stack of p des is the stack of p the stack of p des at any time is the pair that will contain state of p and state of m these determine the transition function of p des the final state of p des are those in which both the state of p and m are accepted if i want to write it in the form of an example i can say m i can write q1 sigma delta 1 q1 and f1 be a dfa which is there for the regular language and for the pda i am having i am having q2 sigma tau delta 2 q2 and f2 this is the machine let us say defined as a pda and which accept my context free language then p des i can define in this way q sigma tau delta q not and f such that q will become the cross product of q1 and q2 q not is nothing but the starting symbol of q1 and q2 the final state is nothing but the cross product of both the machines and the transitions is defined in this way so this is how i can show that l intersection r is a context free language let us take the last one so the tenth one is inverse homomorphism of a context free language is also context free language it is also a closure property of context free language now we have already learned what is homomorphism function <laughs> let us see what is inverse homomorphism if s is a homomorphism of alphabets s to alphabet t and l is a context free language over t then h inverse l is also a context free language let us say this is a set i am having and within set this is a language i am defining and b is another set where the mapping is done from here to here now if i want to take the inverse mapping it will be from b to a it means what the mapping f inverse is a mapping from a to b between two sets a and b and star is any operation then f of x star f of y is equal to f of x star y for every pair of element x y belongs to the set a if x and y are two elements in set a and if fx and fy are two elements of b then after mapping if i take the operation it supposed to be same as i'll take the operation and then take the mapping so let us take an example let l be a language containing 1 1 plus 0 1 star and let l be the homomorphism defined by h of a equal to 0 1 and h of b equal to 1 1 then h of l is the language of regular expression that is b plus a star i hope you understood these closure property about context free language so if you understood give me a like and share among your friends in our next video we'll come again with one more topic see you then take care bye